Hello and welcome to another video blog from home and today on A Vogel Talks Menopause I'm going to be talking about four surprising emotional symptoms that you may experience going through the menopause. If you like my tips and advice then please subscribe and remember to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of all my new videos. Most of us are aware of the physical symptoms that we can get during the menopause, but many women are surprised to find just how big an impact the emotional symptoms can have on their lives. And very often I get women coming to me saying, what's happening? I feel as if I'm going mad. I feel it's only happening to me. Is this okay? Is this usual? Is there anything wrong with me? So what I'm going to do today is look at four of the more common emotional symptoms and what you can do to help yourself. So number one is feeling more introvert or less sociable. You may find that you can't be bothered to go out and meet friends. You might just think, I just want to stay at home. I don't want to be around other people. I don't want to have to make an effort of dressing up or putting on a brave face. I just want to be left alone and this can happen with your family too so it's not just about not wanting to go out with friends but a lot of women find that they they can't be bothered with spending time with their family as well which for them on one hand is very upsetting because they wonder what is wrong with them. With this particular one what's happening here is that low oestrogen can have a quite a big impact on our mood it can make us feel a lot lower a lot less enthusiastic and a lot kind of bluer if you like but our, our mood can get quite low but also it's just the fatigue it, you know the hormonal changes in the menopause put tremendous pressure on you physically and if you've been working hard all day and you're really tired of course the last thing you're wanting to do is have to dress up or go out or make an effort to socialize with other people. Number two is crying all the time or crying at the drop of the hat or just crying and you have no idea why. Um, this was one of my symptoms that, that came and, and went quite a few times and it is having experienced it is just it's quite extraordinary. I, I found myself once absolutely breaking down in floods of tears and I felt so desolate and so sad and so unhappy it was almost as if the I could feel the world was going to end but the weird thing was that it it, it came and, and it went and it stopped just as suddenly as it started and afterwards I was like what on earth was that so I know from experience just how upsetting this one can be because when you're in it you, you you can't rationalize it you are literally just feeling the whole depth of the emotions of, of, of sadness and 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 fear it can also be very distressing if you're doing this at, at work and a lot of women tell me that they become much more sensitive to what other people say and that can make them cry as well they get more upset by being talked to in a way that maybe is um, not very nice for them a lot of women say that they can no longer read newspapers or watch the TV because everything in it is so negative and they end up crying all the time. Again, this is just low oestrogen. It makes us less able to cope with our emotions. It, it loosens our emotional control. So one, we feel things much more deeply, but also we're less able to control that particular emotion at that particular time. Number three is feeling less caring. And th this is quite a, um, a difficult one for a lot of women because suddenly from being in the caring role, being the carer in the family, suddenly they can get very irritable, very angry and also very fed up because other people are still expecting them to do all the caring and all the looking after and the resentment can build up and I, and I have you know women who'll come to me and say I just want to walk out I'm fed up of having to do everything for everybody and I just want to not have anything to do I want to put my feet up and I want to put me first this is mainly due to a hormone called oxytocin oxytocin is your love hormone if you like for the, for those of you who've had children your body is flooded with oxytocin at birth 
so that you will bond with your baby. And we do know that during the menopause, as your oestrogen starts to fall, the production of oxytocin can decrease along with that. And you may find that you just don't want to be in that caring role anymore. Number four is worry and anxiety and, and fears. Again, falling oestrogen, it's all to do with the fact that we are less able to maintain control over how we feel. We can't rationalise our fears. So these fears can multiply, they can get extremely out of hand. And, and I do get women who um, start to fear for their family. They, they just see the worst thing, the worst outcome in every single scenario that they worry about. And this is, it's very draining. It's also very upsetting because you're spending your whole day worrying about things that are probably not going to happen, but you just haven't got the control to be able to justify and rationalize these fears. And it's another really horrible situation to be in. So what can you do to help yourself with all these um, emotional upsets? Herbs such as Hypericum for low mood, if you find that that's your main issue, it's, it's a very nice one. Just be aware though that you can't take it with quite a lot of medication, so you do need to double check any contraindications. You can look at our lovely licensed product Avena Calm for mild anxiety and stress. You can use the flower essences. These are lovely for emotional issues. In this scenario, I would tend to recommend either emotional essence or female essence or sometimes confidence essence as well can be a nice one if you feel that you just can't control what you're doing and you want to be able to build up your confidence that little bit more. Remember the water, this is so important. Falling oestrogen can affect the way our body hydrates itself and dehydration will have a huge impact on your nervous system, making all of these emotional issues worse. So this is a really important tip to remember that water every single day. Look about exercise, and I'm not talking about going mad and running marathons, but some kind of brisk exercise every day. This creates chemicals called endorphins, and these lift our mood, they make us feel happier, they give us a much brighter outlook on life. So this can be a very helpful self-care daily tip to add into your uh, routine. Talk to your family and friends. It's amazing how many family and friends come to me and say, my friend, I don't know what's happening to her. She's changed. She just seems completely different to how she was. And also if you've got children at home and your partner, and this can have quite a big impact on relationships because a lot of partners feel that their loved one is turning into somebody that they don't know, that they're being ignored, that um, they're ending up on the, the, the blunt end of, of all these emotions. So it's really important to talk to your family and your friends and just say, look, I'm going through the menopause, there's something going on with my emotions, I can't always control them, but please bear with me. And having them on your side is going to give you extra support instead of things escalating into a little bit of, of unrest or arguments. I have also got another blog where there's other simple ways that you can boost your mood. So do check with the link. I hope you found this one really helpful. Um, these emotional states can be very distressing. And, you know, I do understand how these feel having gone through most of them myself. Um, so if any of you have gone through anything similar, if you want to share your experiences or if you have any other really good tips, then please um, write down and we would love to read all about them. And I'll see you next week for another edition of A Vogel Talks Menopause.